Our first presenter is Kathy Shock from Oxford Jewish Congregation. So we are really proud, and I was going to say surprised to say that we have silver eco synagogue status. And it's surprised because we've got no land beside a very small paved courtyard. And we were pleased to find there were so many ways that we could still be active on the ground. We found that the audit has been a brilliant way to inspire us, give us ideas of things to do. But we are a unique community in that all strands of Judaism are gathered together as one community, but with different congregations who overlap and then we share everything. We've got one council, one cheder, and all social activities are joint. We adhere to strictly kosher terms within the building. And of course, recently, we've had to abide by COVID rules that's hampered our Kiddushim options for, for being strictly green and kosher. Um, but we have a small eco team and we meet monthly to work out plans for improvement and encouragement and a large eco group who respond when they can, as well as supportive council, management and the educational team. And our pre cater group leader in particular is full of great ideas for the youngest members in their green journey. So I've just come up with two ideas to share with you. We do many other things too, but uh, they seem to have worked and they hope uh, that they're useful for me. So number one is the ecometer. And I think that um, Fiona is going to show you a not very good photo of our ecometer. And I don't know if you can show the other, the other photo as well. There were two, that's right. Because it had a silver plate um, at the top. And the idea was we wanted to encourage other members of the community to tell us what they were doing at home so that that kind of ticked the box about encouraging members to do their own thing. So the, the thermometer was at the, had the silver ball at the top and we asked people to put sticky labels explaining what they personally were doing in their families all the way up the meter so that uh, we could get to the top and, and prove that the members of the community were actually very involved. And I'll give you a quick rundown of the sort of ideas they came up with and the things they said they were going to do. But before that, I suggestion that we have, and we have now got hanging in our sukkah, which is going for gold apples. The idea is basically one of our, our negatives is that when we've had meetings, when we call people together, we find that it's a very small core of people who come. Uh, a fair number on our green group, but they don't always turn up to everything. So we thought perhaps rather than just sending out emails and all the stuff that we usually do to tell them what's going on, um, our next event, which is going to be a harvest lunch, when we're hoping people will share ideas and actually come up with how we can move forward, could be in, uh, actually told about in, in the sukkah. So the idea is simply hanging the sukkah ceiling and people think, well, what's that? And, it, and it's inviting people to the date. So the idea is simply that it will, will make people look at them and wonder what they are and perhaps it will make them remember better that we're having this harvest lunch and uh, we can gather lots of people to come up with good ideas. Based on the audit, we're making a list of all the things we still haven't achieved um, and see who can suggest ways of, of getting there. So one side is an apple and the other side is the, the um, invitation. So it's very simple, but it's just a different way to invite people. And they're obviously cut out, stuck on car. So the quick thing that I was going to tell you is the different pe things that people have put on their stickers. Um, they're on their post-its. So many were walking, busing or cycling instead of instantly using their cars. A few with cars had changed to hybrid or fully electric. Some had actually given up their car and was using a car club occasionally. And one had even set up a car club and is offering to help others do this too. Many were using trains and buses for longer journeys. Some were shopping more locally and some had decided to give up long haul flights. Others were carbon offsetting where it couldn't be avoided. Some had become vegetarian or vegan. Some had given up eating as much meat as before and more people were growing their own vegetables or planting seeds from scratch, growing their own plants or planting trees. Some had stopped buying clothes and some only bought second-hand clothes in charity shops. Many had stopped using plastic bags from shops and replaced them with fabric ones. And one bought mainly from a zero energy store. Others bought unused food from a community shop. Many were recycling their paper. One had recycled a carpet via free cycle when they wanted to replace it. And one had recycled a fitted kitchen that way. 
And with energy use, many were now turning out lights were not in use. Some were taking showers instead of baths or shorter showers. Some were putting on warmer clothes rather than turning up the heat. One had reduced their gas and electric usage by 27%. And one member has a much warmer home after, after increasing their loft insulation from 100 millimeters to 270, which is the, the correct one. Four people had solar panels installed to help with all this too. So those were the, the notes that we got on the Ecometer and people seem to enjoy being able to share that. So that's us. Thank you so much. We've been having some really excited comments in the chat about your brilliant ideas.